In this video, you're gonna learn how you can create and publish your first site in Framer. We're gonna look at the fundamentals and learn everything you need to know so you can be on your way to Framer mastery. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside of Framer, a brand new project. Now, let's talk a little bit about the interface. You'll notice it kind of looks and feels a little bit like Figma. We kind of have this freeform canvas here. On the left-hand side, we have our pages. We have our layers and we have our assets where we can get into things like components or even adding text or color styles. And on the right hand side, we have our properties panel where we can change things like fonts if we're dealing with text, add things like layouts or controls or basically tweak any sort of styling we want. And then on the top bar here, we have a few different things. On the left hand side, we have the ability to add different pre-built sections or elements, things like media such as videos or images or even forms. And then we also have the ability to add frames, which is probably by far the most important part of Framer, or even text as well. We can even connect a CMS to Framer. So if we wanna do something like a blog, we can do that here. And Framer just released plugins, which means there's a ton of new power-ups for Framer. Now let's jump out of Framer just for a minute and let's talk about one really key concept. Essentially in Framer or just building a website in general, Everything is a box, within a box, within a box, within a box, and so on. Now, in this case, we refer to boxes as frames. So let's take a look at a quick couple of examples. So here we have the linear homepage. I'm sure you've probably seen this. Now, if we look at this, there's a lot of things going on, but really at the core, it's just boxes. We have this outside box around the whole frame here. We have a box which kind of contains the nav bar. And then that nav bar is split up into two different boxes, a box for the content on the left and then a box for the content on the far right. Then we also have a box containing the hero content for our text and even the button itself would be considered a box. Another example is the framer.com website. Again, we've got some images on the right and then we've got some text on the left as well as a nav bar. Pretty simple, right? But if we break this down, again, it's just a bunch of boxes. So you can start to see how this kind of comes to play. We build our boxes first and then we add our content inside of it. So inside Framer here, now this is the biggest thing you're gonna wanna learn. And I'm not a huge fan of like shortcuts and things, but the one I always use is the letter F, which means to draw a new frame on the canvas. So I'm just gonna press on F and you'll notice we'll get a different icon here. And then I can just draw in a frame on our canvas, which is our breakpoint here. Now, if I select this frame, you'll notice we've got it in our layers tab within our desktop, which is our breakpoint. We'll talk a little bit about breakpoints later on. Now, inside this frame, I can tweak a lot of different settings. Let's start with sizing. So sizing, you've got a few different options. You've got fixed, relative, fill, and fit content. Fixed is probably what you're used to most. It's basically meaning that if something is fixed, it's always gonna be that size. So if I draw something on Figma, it's always gonna be fixed sort of sizing. So if I set the width to be 500 pixels, and if I preview this website by clicking this little icon at the top right, you'll notice no matter how big or small I make my website, this is always gonna stay at 500 pixels in width. Now this is good, but the problem is it doesn't actually let us build responsive websites. So most of the time you're going to want to use relative sizing. And this essentially means we use percentages instead of fixed sizing. So now if I set the width of this to be say 80% and we'll just make this centered on my canvas, you'll notice if I preview this, it's now 80% of the whole canvas. And then if I make this smaller, it continues to flex and will always be 80%. Now let's talk about height. Now let's say I wanted to make it that this height here of this frame filled up the whole screen. And then as I scroll, it would show more content. Now what we could do is set the height to be viewport. And if I set this to 100 VH, it's essentially saying it's gonna take up 100% of the viewport height. So if I previewed this, you notice it might be a little bit off, but if I get this right on, 
That's actually 100% of my viewport. So this is how we can create full top sections of a website. So what I'm actually gonna do is set the width of this to be 100% and keep the viewport height of 100 VH. Now I'm gonna go onto my desktop frame here, which is the whole breakpoint itself. And we're gonna turn layout on. Layout is another thing that's really critical to master inside of Framer. And you'll use layout for basically everything. This means we can align things in a very clean way. And you'll notice everything's already snapped to the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is draw a new frame inside of this frame. So let's just draw a new frame here and let's call this outer one the hero section because that's what it's gonna be. And we'll add one in here called container. Now you'll notice that essentially I've got this new frame here, which means I can manipulate it as much as I want. If I turn on layout within the hero section, you now notice we can control the layouts of anything inside of that frame. So here, if I change the direction, you'll notice nothing is happening because there's only one element in here. But if I added a second frame, so if we just copy paste this, you notice if I change the direction from vertical to horizontal, now these boxes or frames are gonna sit side by side. We could also set the distribute, so where this is actually starting from. So if I set the distribute to start from the start, then it's gonna start from the left-hand side. If I make it to the end, it's gonna to go to the end. So if I change the direction, it's gonna start from the direction of vertical. Now, just for now, we're going to keep this centered. And if I wanted to change the spacing between these two frames here, this is what we refer to as a gap. Now you'll see this little pink marker in between here. We can just click and drag this to make that space bigger, or we can modify it to the exact pixel that we want on the right hand side. So let's just set this to 25 pixels of a gap for now. Now, if you understand this and that everything is a frame within a frame and you just need layout for most things, then you're probably already on your way. So what I can do is use these principles to build a really simple hero section. So let's just get rid of this for now. And I'm gonna set this container to be 1100 pixels. Now I'm gonna keep this as fixed and I'll show with you why. Because when I preview my website, if I'm on a bigger screen, I want all of my content to always stay to the center. And this is almost like our tram tracks analogy, right? Where if you go on any website and you kind of scale it up large enough or view it on a larger screen, you notice that all the content always stays to the center. And then obviously as we get smaller, it might become more flexible. But the reason we keep it to the center is because we're having all of that content within its container. And we can set that to be fixed because we always want it to be fixed. And then everything outside of that is then flexible, therefore using relative positioning. So now that we've got our container set up, what I'm gonna do is set the height of this to be 100% because I actually want all of my content to fit within my hero section, just like so. Now, what I'm gonna do is draw a new frame again inside of this and we'll start to add some of our content. So again, I'm gonna add a width of 100% here so it takes up as much space as it can. And you'll notice it's kind of not uh, formatting to my guidelines that I want it to with layout. And that's because layout hasn't been turned on. So again, if we turn layout on, on a frame, it's going to manipulate everything within that frame. So I'm gonna turn on layouts within our container now, and now you'll start to see that it snaps into place. So let's go ahead here and let's align this to the bottom, just like so. And then inside this frame, let's just call it our content and we can add some text. So I'm gonna add my name here. And if we scroll down, you notice we've now got a property for our text where we can tweak things like the sizing or the color or even the typeface. So let's just make this a little bit bigger and let's make this a little bit tighter and let's use a different font as well. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now, the other thing we're gonna do here, and you'll notice that inside this frame, uh, obviously I can turn layout on within the content to kind of center it however I want, but you'll notice we've kind of got this excess height here and I can kind of size this down to kind of just fit it as I could, but you'll notice it's still kind of fitting as a fixed percentage. Now this can just be tedious and annoying, but the one thing we should be doing when we're building sections like this is we wanna set the height to be auto, which essentially means it's going to fit the content. It's not gonna do anything more. So now you notice, even if I add an extra line in here and we go, uh, my name is 
Ryan Hayward again and make this text maybe a little bit shorter. And you'll notice it's just expanding depending on how much content there is. So let's just remove this again for now. And let's go ahead and remove these background colors since I kind of know what's going on now. Okay, great. And I also want some text on the right hand side. So let's go, uh, hey, my name is Ryan and I create pretty cool framer websites. And let's just make this a little bit more like paragraph copy. So we'll shrink this down. We might even change the font here. And what I'm gonna do, since I want this to be a certain width and not be as long as what it is, I'm gonna wrap this in its own frame. Now I can just create a new frame here and draw it around and it will just kind of wrap this within its own sort of frame. And then I'm just gonna set the height here to be auto so it fits the content again. And now we're gonna set the width to be fixed because we wanted to set it to be something specific. So I'm just gonna set it to 350 pixels, but you'll notice we've got this weird sort of like overflow issue. Now, by default, text in Framer is set to auto. So it's automatically just gonna fit the content. But unfortunately, it's gonna overflow. So to get around this, all we're gonna do is set the width to be 100%. And now you'll notice it's being flexible within that container and it's not overflowing. So let's go ahead here and just remove that background fill. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more text here. And let's change the styling of this just a little bit. Now, I'm gonna play around with the layout here on my content frame. And we're gonna change the distribute to space between. So everything gets pushed as far as it can. And then we'll change the alignment to the top, just like so. So now let's just preview this really quick. And you'll notice that everything is sitting inside that container and it's all sitting pretty flexibly. Now, the next thing I wanna do here is add a button, just some sort of basic call to action. Now, a button in Framer is essentially just a frame with some text in it. So what I'm gonna do is draw a new frame here, all right? And you notice since layout is on, it's just going to the center. And then we'll add some text in here, which will say, uh, contact me. And let's just change the styling of this. And let's just make it white for now. Now, the other trick with buttons that I tend to use is set the width and height to be auto. So it fits the content. And then we can add a little bit of padding around the outside. So that's like an invisible border around our frame. So if I set it to 20 pixels, you'll notice it's creating this invisible border here. Now I can even tweak the certain sides. So I'm gonna tweak the top to be 10 and the bottom to be 10 as well, just so it's a little bit nicer. And the reason I've done this is so the button itself is flexible. So if I change the copy here to be get in touch or something even longer, get in touch to contact me, you notice the button is responding to the text. And this is how we can create some really clean and consistent systems. Now, what I'm gonna do is just call this button for now. And I can also set this up as a component. So if I call this my button, and there's some other videos on components on the internet, I'll be doing my own tutorial here on YouTube, but if you do wanna learn the whole world of components, which is quite far, I've got a masterclass as well. So I'll link that down below. But since it is a button, it appears in my assets tab, meaning whenever I want and want on whatever page, I can just quickly drag that in because I'll be reusing it over and over. For now, it's fine. So let's go back into our layers tab and I'm actually gonna drag this button inside our stack here, which has our content on the right hand side. And I'm gonna make sure all this is aligned to the left. But I actually want my button here to sit at the bottom of this frame. So very simply, all I need to do is set the height of this to be 100%. So it takes up 100% height of the frame that it's in. And then I'm gonna set the distribute to be space between. So everything gets pushed to the top and bottom now. And just like that, I've done exactly what I've wanted to do. Now, the last thing I wanna do here is add an image. So I'm gonna draw a new frame above my content here. And let's make this a color that I can see. And we'll set the width to be 100%. And I just automatically wanna take up the rest of the space that's available. So with the height, I'm gonna set it to fill meaning it's going to take up as much space as it has available. And then all I'm gonna do is change the gap between the frame here and the content. So I'm just gonna select the container, which contain both, and then I'm just gonna change the gap. So let's set that to be 35 pixels. Okay, great. Now this is close. The last thing I wanna do is just add a little bit of padding on the top and bottom, because I don't like how much it's actually pushing to the edges here. 
So I'm just gonna change the padding to be 20 pixels. And I think that looks pretty good. Now let's go back to our frame here and we'll just rename this image. Now, if I click on fill and go to this image icon at the right here, we can now upload our own image. But for now, I'm just gonna press on plugins and use the Unsplash plugin to find a really high quality uh, image for free. Okay, that looks great. And let's just change the color of this hero section to be black. And then that means I also need to update the color of my type. Okay, cool. So now we have a pretty basic hero section of our website. Doesn't really do too much right now, but it looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is make it responsive. So when we talk about responsiveness, we're talking about breakpoints. Now, if you think of a browser, so let's go to the internet really quick. Okay, so here you have our company website. Now you'll notice if I start to shrink this, everything's kind of flexible, but it will get to a certain point where the layout changes completely. See that? It's actually changing the layout completely. Now, why is this happening? So inside a framer, we can set something called breakpoints, which essentially means that at a certain width, when your browser gets to a certain width, it's going to change the layout completely. So the most common examples of this is desktop breakpoint, tablet breakpoint, and then mobile breakpoint. And this is how we achieve true responsiveness. So what I'm gonna do is create a new tablet breakpoint here. And you'll notice things already start to be a little bit whack. And if I preview this, you'll notice this is what it will look like on a typical tablet with a width of 810 pixels. So essentially meaning that anything less than that size, it's gonna break. So then what we can do is just change the styling settings in here to make it work. Now, most of the time, the reason why your thing is breaking and what you need to fix is the sizing. And normally it is because there's a fixed size on the sizing, so it's not actually being flexible. So typically what I do is just a bunch of problem solving and trying to find where something is fixed and change it to 100%. You might also need some more padding around the outside, especially as you get to a phone sort of breakpoint. Now, here's a really great example where the layout just isn't working. Maybe the text size is a little bit big, so I might wanna shrink that down on mobile. But again, we can also change the layout here as well. And since this is getting cut off, we actually wanna set the height to be auto, so it fits that content automatically. Even here, it's a little bit too big, so we might set the height to be auto, the width be 100%, and then just change the gap to style it exactly how we want. Now you'll notice there's some of this like white space at the bottom of my breakpoints here. And that's because inside my desktop, our height is automatically set to a thousand pixels. So if we just set that to auto, everything will fit just like so. So now if I preview my website, start to shrink it down, you'll notice that it's become truly responsive. And then the very last thing I need to do is publish this to the internet. So if I go to the top right, press on publish, and just like that, I have a website live on the internet. Okay, that was a lot to cover, but this can go quite far. And hopefully some of these fundamental principles will help you build any site you want inside of Framer. But if you truly want to master Framer, I do have the Ultimate Framer Masterclass, our A to Z course on mastering Framer, loved by over 800 students. I'll leave the link down to it below, but I really hope this video helped you. And if you want more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out more Framer tutorials for free here on YouTube every single week. Until next time, I'll catch you later.